All right, so today is November 29th. This is period two. And this is notes on four, three, four. Solving quadratic equations by factory. <clears throat> All right, so we've come to a point now where we have learned all of the factoring methods that you're responsible for for this class, okay? And when we did each method, I gave you a bookwork assignment where you practiced that method only. And then we did a quiz where you used that method only. And then we did that for each factoring method we learned. So now that we've learned them all, we're at a point now where when you're given a problem to factor, you're going to have to figure out which method to use. Nobody's going to tell you. You have to be able to figure that out. So um, one of the things that I've done for you to kind of help that process along is I've created this reference sheet that I've just passed out to you. Okay? So instead of having to flip through multiple pages of your notes to try and find a place where you're going to look for a guide to help you figure out which method to factor, all you have to do is refer to this one sheet. So that sheet has each factory method we've learned in bold, and then next to it is when do you use it in bold, and then one example of a problem where I've used that factory method. You may use this uh, reference guide when you take a quiz or a test um, from now on for, for the rest of the year. I'm gonna allow you to have this out in front of you. Um, what we're doing right now is we're not only choosing which factoring method, but we're also using factoring to solve equations. So we're learning a couple of new things right now. And there's gonna be a test on that, I think on Tuesday, okay? So when you take your test on Tuesday on solving equations using factoring, the only thing that you will be allowed to have on your desk is this reference sheet, right? No notebooks, no phones. I think that test is going to be on Tuesday. Here's my first problem. Write that down. So this one's a little easier. Step one is done for you. Step two is two is factor. So you have to go through your head. What do I always, 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 always do first? GCF. GCF. What's the GCF of this problem? One. One. Good. All right. So now that I've determined I can't factor anything, any number or variable out of the whole thing, now I'm going to pick one of the other factoring methods. So this has three terms. Which factoring method should I use for polynomials with three terms? AC, very nice. And since A is one, this is an easy problem. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to use the easy AC method. All right, so with easy AC, I'm gonna take C and put it up top. I have negative 42 up top and I've got B on the bottom. So I need you to tell me two numbers that multiply to negative 42 and add to negative one. Seven and six. Good, seven and six. All right, since the C is negative, that means these two things have opposite signs. The B is negative, that means the larger of those two numbers is negative. With easy AC, I don't have to do anything else, just stick those numbers into the parentheses. So I have X minus seven, times x plus six equals zero. So I've done step two, which is factor. Step three is to set the factors equal to zero. So I'm gonna take my x minus seven, I'm setting 
that equal to zero. And then the other factor, x plus six, I'm setting that equal to zero. Step four is to solve those equations, or solve all of the equations. So for my first equation, what do I do to get x by itself? <coughs> Add seven. So x equals seven is one of my solutions. And then the other equation? Subtract six. So x equals negative six is my second solution for this equation. There are two different values that make that equation true. Next problem, write that down. So the equation again is already set equal to zero, so I still don't have to do step one. Now I'm going to factor it. So what do I always, 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 always do first? GCF. What's the GCF? Divide 49? Seven. seven. Good. Only seven times seven, or of course 49 and one. This, is 16 divided by seven? No. All right. So there's no GCF. This problem has two <laughs> terms. So which method would I use to factor polynomials with two terms? Difference of squares. Good. If it has two terms, it could either be different of squares some are difference of cubes. This has a power of two that makes it a square. Okay, that's how I'm, I'm choosing that. So what's the square root of 49a squared? 7a. What's the square root of 16? 4. So I've got my 7a minus 4 and my 7a plus 4. <coughs> so that's step two, which is factor. Step three is to take the factors and set them each equal to zero. So my 7a minus 4 equals zero. And my 7a plus 4 equals zero. And step four is to solve. Here in my green equation, what do I do first? Add four. Now what? Divide. Divide by 7. Good. So I have A equals 4 sevenths. That's one of my solutions. The second equation, what do I do first? Subtract 4. So I have 7A equals negative 4. Now what? by 7. So I have A equals negative 4 7. So that's my second solution. down that problem. All right, <clears throat> step one is to get the equation set equal to zero. So this is my first problem where there's no zero on either side of the equal sign. So that's what I have to do first. All right, um, and so the first thing I'm gonna do on the left-hand side of this equal sign, that's not in simplest form. 
So I want to put that in simplest form first, which means I'm going to distribute that x. So x times 13 gives me 13x. x times negative x is negative x squared. So I have um, both sides of the equal sign in simplest form now. I still don't have it set equal to zero though. So if I want to have an equation set equal to zero, I have to either clear out what's on the left-hand side of the equal sign or clear out what's on the right-hand side of the equal sign. There's a choice in there. You could do either one and get the correct answer. But there is a way that is much easier, much more convenient to choose which side of the equal sign you want your stuff on. Okay? And that is that we always want the first term that's the term with the largest exponent to be positive. Okay? So in this problem, which term has the largest exponent? The x with which x? x to the second. Power of 2 is the largest exponent in this problem. So that means I want my negative x squared, that term, to be positive. Okay? We always want the term with the largest exponent to be positive. If it's negative where it is right now, then if I move it to the right-hand side of the equal sign, it will become positive, and that's what I want. I want that term to be positive. That means, since I have to put a zero somewhere, I'm going to put a zero on the left-hand side of the equal sign, okay? because I want that to become positive. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides of the equal sign. That will move my x squared to the right-hand side of the equal sign and make it positive. <clears throat> Again, I want everything on the left-hand side of the equal sign to go away because I need a zero in the problem. So that means I also want this 13x to go away. So I'm going to add its opposite also to both sides of the equal sign. So now, by doing that, I have eliminated both terms that are on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And that's how I'm going to get my zero. That's where the zero comes from. On the right-hand side of the equal sign, those three things are not like terms. Okay, So I'm just bringing all of them down, and I'm bringing them down in a way that they are in descending exponent order. So that means the term with the largest exponent goes first, and then the term that only has the x, and then finally the constant term. All right, so I have done step one. Step one is to set the equation equal to zero. Step two is to factor. What factory method do I always, 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 always use first? What's the GCF of this problem? All right, one, good. This, this has three terms. Which method do I use? AC, is it easy or hard? Easy, good. All right, so I'm looking for factors of 40 whose sum is negative 13. What are my magic numbers? same because C is positive. My signs have to both be negative because B is negative. So they are both negative. So I'm going to substitute my magic numbers into the problem. Since this is an easy problem, I just have to <laughs> plug them into the parentheses. So I have done step two, which is factor. Step three is to set each factor equal to zero. So now I have x minus eight equals zero, and x minus five equals zero. That's step three. Step four is to solve. So I want to get x by itself. So I'm going to add eight to the side of the equal sign. That gives me x equals eight. 